Welcome to The Good Ride. I'm James Beastie, and I'm here to make mediocre matter one good setup at a time. And thanks for coming to check out my review of the Capita Kazu 157 for 2024. Next to it is the Aeronaut. I'm really not gonna be talking about the Aeronaut much in this review because the Kazu is unique to the Capital line and I don't really have something to really compare it to because it just sits on its own. I rode this with Union Atlas, Burton Kendo's Ride Torrents and my Ride Fuse boots. I got this in a good amount of conditions, some kind of varied powder, good in some places, shallow, and bottom outy in other places with uneven hard snow. Then I got it in some good groomers as well and some slightly varied terrain. And when it comes to sizing, this 57 fit me really well. I felt like my boots could control the board and turn it. I felt like it matched my weight pretty well. Now, when it comes to shape, this Kazu really feels centered on board. You feel that taper though, because you're so centered. A lot of boards with this amount of taper have much more of a setback stance. So you're getting a little more weight on that tail. You definitely feel a little bit of that taper on snow, but it's not that bad. Then you throw in this camber profile and the old Kazu that I rode was more camber to the tail and then just early rise before the nose. Now this has the same early rise before the nose, but a little, bit of early rise before the tail too. So there's a little less camber, not as technical as it used to be, and it's a little more forgiving, but I didn't feel like I was missing a lot of that camber like I did in past models. It feels stable, it tracks well, it one foots off the chair well, it flat bases well. Now let's talk flex. It's got a pretty medium stiff flex. There's not a lot of give here. The nose has a touch more give. This little pintail here has a little more give, but overall it's pretty medium stiff. This and the Black Snowboard of Death, they feel a little more damp, a little less ultra light, a little less rubbery poppy like a lot of capital boards do, like the Aeronaut next to it, there is a noticeable difference in terms of feel underfoot and pop. I could butter on this okay, and nose butter on this okay as well. It didn't take a lot of effort. So overall, interesting flex personality. And then you take that personality and put it in all kinds of conditions. It doesn't chatter too much. It doesn't buck and bounce you around too much. It's definitely more damp than most of the Capita boards I tried. In comparison to the Aeronaut next to it, my indoor survival to the Navigator, the, the Mega Merc and the Mercury would be less damp as well. So I really like this for riders who see a lot of uneven snow, wet, messy, hard, micro bumpy. This does better than most capital boards out there. When it comes to base glide, I thought it was pretty good, but maybe not the fastest out there in Capita's line, but it had good base glide. They've really upped their base game the last few years and they're offering really good bases with a good amount of structure that can sometimes be annoying, but after the board breaks in, you ride it a little while, that wears down a little bit, and then it's great for spring riding as well as winter riding. And this, out of all the boards I rode in my test this year, even the Megadeth, this was the dampest. It, it, it was really fun going fast with this, and it felt just comfortable at speed. It's no super bomber. Just like the Black Snowboard of Death, it's fast. It's one of the fastest rides and dampest rides in Capita's line, but it's not like this ultra free ride bomber, but it's very good for an all mountain board. Very competent mountain speed and does very good there. So when it comes to edge hold, there isn't really much going on here. It's okay in harder snow, but it's not a hard snow specialist. It's definitely better for good groomers. When it comes to turn initiation, this 157 felt good for me pretty medium fast. If you're in tight spots and you need to make a quick turn, this is gonna do a good job. When you get it over on edge, it feels balanced bordering on that semi straight liney side. It's not that super turny, but I, I was still able to do some across the groomer carves and, and such without any issue. Yeah, there isn't as much spring out of the turn as there used to be, but it wasn't bad at all, especially coming off the Megadeth 
to this. This still has some camber pop out of the turn, but I think it does need a, just a touch more back foot weight. I could drive it pretty well off the front foot. I could drive it pretty well centered, but I felt a little tentative like the tail might wash. And when I leaned back into it a little bit, finishing the turn, to keep that tail from washing, that's when I had the most fun, but I think it's doable either way. It's a snowboard, you can turn it however you please. And when it comes to powder, you can get 2.375 inches back from center of board at a 22 inch stance width. That's not bad, but for a board with close to 10 mil of taper in the 157, that's not a lot. A lot of 10 mil taper boards are much further set back or like three and a half, you know, four inches back from center of board. So you're riding this very centered. It's not the kind of ride that is for those who set back their board. This is more of a mountain freestyle ride. And I felt like I was struggling the most with this, maybe other than the Aeronaut next to it when I was testing in powder that day. I think it's great for those who ride centered though. And now with this new camber profile that has an early rise before the tail too, it was a little easier to wheelie up, but it's still a lot of back leg work for low angle powder riding like I was doing. This is more for steep, deep, big mountain, freestyle powder riding. Ride and switch was doable. It's much more doable than you would think for how much taper this board has. I thought it did a great job there. I think this would be a great board for launching off big kickers. So if you launch off big kickers, go do it and tell me how it was, because I'm not. Small, micro jumps around the mountain. Good times for me, not a great jibber, but I wouldn't mind this in the pipe. I'd like a little more edge hold, but. I could definitely have a good time in the pipe with this. Not an amazing time though. And overall, if you're looking for a setback, directional, easy floating board in powder that can also rip groomers, I don't know if this is your board. But if you want a tapered, directional, centered, mountain freestyle kind of ride that rips groomers pretty well from a centered standpoint and also rides powder pretty well for being this centered on board, and you ride a lot of steeper terrain and you're, you're turning the mountain into a park when you're riding powder, this could work for you. 